I opened my eyes this time. My head was resting on someone's lap. What? <laughs> It's Jessica and welcome back to Locked Heart. So a lot of you wanted me to continue it I think it's just because it's the beginning of the game So we don't really know what's going on and some of you have told me that Some of the choices actually like lock you in from the beginning to a certain route So I don't know exactly whose route I'm locked in right now. So I guess we'll just go with the flow and see who's uh, character we romance first and no we don't romance on them as bears. So everyone calm down <laughs> All right, let's continue we walked along the hallway in silence. It didn't take long for the awkwardness to set in. She hadn't even spoken a single word since we left the bears. The ragged doll seemed fl flustered from earlier. I was very certain she called her Prince a while ago. I felt to the edge of my lips curve into a very realization of it. Say... Yes? She turned to me quite abruptly and her cheeks had become bright red too. You like him, right? I gave Lily a sweet teasing smile. The fabric in her cheeks lost color. What? H how do you know that? Are you psychic? I didn't let the giggle leave my chest, just in case it might upset her. She was adorable when she stuttered. To be frank, you're very, very obvious. No! Pressing her hands to her embarrassed face, Lily fled away in the hall and disappeared. Wait! I remained there, dumbstruck. She hadn't even told me what room was to be mine. A mansion filled with talking toys. Why do I feel like things will only get crazier soon? I fidgeted, trying to stand still while the three teddy bears examined me head to toe. Flashback. Lady Aura, I have a favor to ask of you. Hmm? If it's alright, I want to make a dress for you. What? Solo began to fidget, his little paws pushing against one another. You see, I design clothes, and it has been a long time since I made one for a person. Not only was Sol a prince, but a prince that could make clothes. That reminds me of someone. <laughs> it was a rare thing to even think about. I stared at Sol, fascinated, and tried to imagine him sewing. I thought about his favor for I thought about his favor for a while, but then again, I needed a distraction to keep my mind busy from thinking too much about my current situation. If you don't mind me begging If you don't mind me being your model, then I'll gladly do it. End of flashback. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little nervous as my tape measure told three males my body shape. Even if they were teddy bears, it was kind of embarrassing. Perfect! Finally got the measurements for you! Alright! Sol hopped down from the chair, rolling up his measuring tape. It had been five days since I arrived at the cursed mansion of the deluxe family, and every time I woke up, I still hoped that everything I discovered was just a dream. I will never forget you, my dearest hopes and dreams. <laughs> I let out a sigh, just as I felt something heavy befall my chest. I hoped that we encountered each other again before the afterlife. The soul I saw today was completely different from the usual persona he had showed everyone. Right now, he seemed exactly like a child with a new toy. So I'm the toy then? You better make sure that her dress is as cute as her. Of course, a beautiful lady only deserves the best. Stop it, you two, you're flattering me too much. We're only saying the truth, my lady. You're both exaggerating. I looked over at Grumpy Royal, sitting in foot of a bed and with his arms uh, with his arms crossed. He was so blunt. Dion tisked at Royal, waving his paw at him. Royal, Royal, Royal. A beautiful person like Aura wearing fine clothing is a remarkable sight. You clearly don't know how to appreciate real beauty. Like I said before, you have bad taste. Hey, don't you know it's cruel to for a gentleman to tell a woman that she's not beautiful? It's weird, because like I know I know they're trying to like be all nice and be themselves, but because they're like bears, the concept of them flirting with Aura is so odd. I didn't say that she's ugly. Just indirectly said so. My smile started to crack and I felt my eyebrow begin to twitch. My self-esteem couldn't take much more of this. Come on, you two, you're making Lady Aura uncomfortable. I'm out of here. Royal jumped from my bed and strode out of the room. I wanted to tell him off for being grumpy all the time, but it seemed like an exercise in ability. And you, brother. I thought Miss Maria told you to tend to the garden. I'm a white teddy bear, dear brother. Do you think I'll let myself get soiled with dirt? Dion's tone of voice seemed lighthearted, but I couldn't help feeling the tension was forming in the room. Besides, it's hard to take care of my soft, silky fur. It requires high maintenance. Oh my goodness. So aside, turning away from Dion and making notes of in, making notes on his paper. Tell that to Miss Maria. No way! That demon will surely eat me alive. That's why I'm expecting you to cover for me. 
Sol flinched and I turned around. He looked ex exasperated. Even his teddy bear appearance didn't hide what I- what looked like unhappiness. I've been covering you for many years, big brother! Isn't it about time that you accept your responsibilities? It was Dion's turn to flinch this time. Sol shook his head. It seemed like he wanted to say something but kept quiet. Dion frowned and crossed his arms. You know, Sol, you ought to be yourself. What do you mean? We're the only ones left here and you act like things haven't changed. Sol flinched again and shook a little. I wasn't wrong about it this time. He looked depressed. I know we look like them now, but you're not a toy, Sol. You can be whoever you want, and I... I miss the old Sol. I looked at Sol and then at Dion. I didn't understand what they were talking about. Even though it was my room, I felt like I was eavesdropping on something I shouldn't. Ow! Why does my chest feel tight all of a sudden? I reached out my chest, my hand touching the rusty locket on my mother gave me. Anyway, I better go before the demon sees me here. Dion salutes us before strolling out of the room. I let out a sigh of relief. The tension started to subside now that Dion had left. Must be nice to live a carefree while others clean up after you. You're supposed to be the heir, not me! Solo spoke in such a low voice that I didn't quite hear everything he said. I did get the last part, though. I had heard before that Sol was the next heir, but Dion was older than him. Why wasn't he the next heir? I hope you don't mind me asking, but why is Dion not the heir? I I'm not saying that, that you're not suited to become the heir or anything. So Sol smiled at me, but it wasn't the same smile he had earlier. It felt tired and forced. Brother was indeed supposed to be the heir, but father had some difficulties handling him. He was too irresponsible and carefree. Yeah, I figured because like it's funny because usually the older the eldest brother of like stories or eldest like child are usually the more mature ones, and then the younger ones are always immature. So I find it find it uh, funny that Sol is the one who's more mature than Dion. Sol struggled with the last words. I didn't dis I didn't disagree given what I've seen of Dion since coming here. He complimented me a lot, but he acted like he didn't even care- he didn't have a care in the world. He spent more time dodging chores than doing them. Sol shook his head as if it's to clear the air, changing the subject. Anyway, I'm very excited to design this dress for you. I didn't dare to further ask him more about their trouble with Dion. All I have made since then are, are the ones that Gold wears every day, as a doll, that is. That's why I'm really looking forward to this. Sol's shoulders slumped as he looked outside the window with a distant expression on his face. Father was not pleased when he found out that I enjoyed designing clothes. He thought it was inappropriate for his son to like such things, especially as the heir of the Deluxe family. What a- Solo's smile remained wistful for a moment. I tried to think of something uplifting to say, but the words were stuck in my throat. By the way, what kind of dress do you prefer? I decided not to pursue the tension from before. <laughs> something sexy, something elegant, oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's- hey, let's go for sexy first, I mean, why not? A flash of red- a flash of red lit up in Sol's face as, and his jaw fell. S sexy Giggled, I nodded. I meant it as a joke, but his reaction was adorable that I couldn't help teasing him. Well, yeah, I might be unable to leave the mansion grounds, but that doesn't mean I cannot look stunning when I'm here. I flipped my hair for effect, though I imagine I look quite silly. Sol didn't seem to notice, still flustered over my request. Well, I suppose, but are you sure, my lady? I grinned at Sol, nodding. I I'm sure I can think of something that all of you will be happy with. I put my hand over my mouth and I couldn't stop the laughter. Sol just looked so cute. He wanted to make me happy even though the suggestion made me un made him uncomfortable. Sol, I'm only joking. Any clothes you design for me will be perfect. Breathing a deep sigh, Sol gave me a smile that looked much more relieved than his earlier one. I will have to think long and hard on what this dress will suit uh, such a troublesome princess. I kept my hands near my mouth, but this time to hide the blushing flooding my cheeks. Almost two weeks had passed since I arrived at the Lux Mansion. I kept myself busy I kept myself busy enough that I helped with general chores such as cooking, which I finally was able to do after convincing them. At least I could pretend I had made it my new job and practice my skills. However, I still had no idea how to break this curse. Seeing images of my wrinkly old self being trapped here forever wasn't helping either. It freaked me out rather more than motivate me to look harder to look for the solution. At least the toys won't be. At least the toys won't see themselves get old over the years. After I said that, I realized I should keep it to myself. Being trapped here in Toy's body wasn't a good thing after all. I often thought about the youngest child, Gold, that she was a doll who remained lifeless, and I continuously wonder why. Why is she different? Maybe she holds a clue to breaking the curse. Yeah, I find that weird. 
Because, like, she was the one who didn't do anything. It was the father, right? So... As I whispered that to myself, my wandering uh, to the east wing, I remembered that I didn't know which room was Gold's. In fact, they haven't even told me anything more about her. It's probably because they don't trust me yet. However, as I walked in the halls, I realized I needed to meet Gold. I just had this feeling in my chest, hoping that everyone would agree. I knocked on the door of Sol's workroom. It was the room he used for his sewing projects. So I looked up from his drafting board. There were sketches under his paws. Is there something troubling you, Lady Aura? Um, I know this is kind of straightforward, but if it's okay with you, would I be, well, would I be allowed to meet your sister? Sol didn't say anything in response. He sort of tilted his head in thought and touched a paw to his lips. I'm sorry, I know that's asking a lot, but you, but you said I must have come here for a reason, right? Sol remained silent. I understood that he needed to think about it and it made sense to for, and it made sense for him to hesitate. But still, I feared that he would reject my request. He hopped down from his chair and walked past me. Sol? Please follow me, Lady Aura. Is he gonna show us? Sol led me to a set of large white double doors. I'd seen this door countless times already, but never really paid attention to it. He opened it and ushered me inside. Oh! That's the sister! That's that's kind of creepy, you know, cuz it, it it's like those like, you know, those like porcelain dolls That's really creepy. I don't like that and knowing that she's actually a person eh. Beyond the door on the velvet sati sat a mo the most beautiful doll I've ever seen Her shiny gold curls cascaded down her shoulders. Her eyes were as blue as the sky But looking into those eyes gave me a dismiss dismissal feeling They seemed empty This is my sister gold She's beautiful Indeed. Sol hesitated and looked up at me. I apologize not for introducing you sooner. It's just that gold is very precious to us. We want to protect her at all costs. I hope you won't be offended by this. I shook my head and smiled at him. Don't worry, I understand. Will the others be okay with this? They won't question my decision, but I don't think it would be an issue with anyone. We've been discussing whether to introduce you to gold for some time. Aura? A girl's voice called to me. I whipped my head around, but there was no one there except for Sol and I. Did you hear that? Hear what? Someone called my name. What? <laughs> Is there ghosts in the house now? Sol gave me a concerned look as I continued to glance around the room. I didn't hear anything at all. Feeling apprehensive, I instinctively reached for my lock and squeezed it for reassurance. It was impossibly warm. My vision blurred and the world around me began to spin. What's going on now? I hear Sol's voice yelling my name, but it faded into silence as I collapsed into darkness. My heart. I heard that sweet, melancholy voice again, but I didn't understand what it was talking about. Something about a heart. I don't know how long I was out. The darkness seemed to stretch on forever. I tried to open my eyes, but I would immediately close them when the pain throbbed at my temples. I cringed. What? Just happened to me? Lady Aura! I felt a warm hand touch my my forehead. The sensation was strange, especially since I was in the house with only toys. Lady Aura, are you alright? The voice was familiar, so soft and gentle. Soul? I opened my eyes this time. My head was resting on someone's lap. What? <laughs> oh, so this is what Soul actually looks like. Dude! Okay, so everyone- yeah, this is- everyone can calm down why it's not like just bears now, so it's an actual person. <laughs> Thank goodness, you're finally awake! I stared up at the face of a blonde prince hovering over me, concerned over his handsome features. His hair was shiny yet- was sunshine yellow and his eyes are color of jade. How are you feeling? I tried to get away from the strange person, but my headache shot up to an excruciating level, and I felt the dizziness return. The prince eased back down. Please lay down a little longer. You hit your head rather hard when you fell a while ago. It was my fault for not being able to help you. I thought I deeply apologize, my lady. <laughs> Who are you? I didn't understand why there was a human here. Only toys lived here in the deluxe mansion now. His face was kind, but I couldn't help feeling scared. It's me, Soul. Your soul? Whoa, hello. <laughs> that smile he showed me was gentle. Strange as it sounded, I believed it was Sol because of that smile. Just how hard did I hit my head? It came to me as a, as a surprise as well. Everything happened so fast. I do not know how to explain it. Wait, if you're back to being human, then the others are human again as well, but... His gaze shifted to where Gold was sitting. She hadn't moved, still a lifeless doll. 
we thought the curse had finally ended, but... Hearing the softness of my mind in his voice made my chest feel tight. Can you stand? Yes. Easy now. I held onto Soul's arms and tried to get in onto my feet. My legs felt boneless. It took all of my strength to not collapse onto the floor again. The higher I rose from my position, the dizziness I felt, unable to stop myself. I felt the- I fell against Soul's chest. I apologize for this, my lady. Soul swept me into his arms without hesitation. My instinct was to- f My instinct was to fail- flail, but I barely had any energy to speak. Put me down. You're weak and tired. I cannot let you walk in this condition. I opened my mouth to argue, but I couldn't even muster it words anymore. I felt so tired. Closed my eyes and leaned against Soul's chest. The rhythm of his heart echoed in my head, lulling me to sleep. Okay, you're just picking us up all of a sudden. After that fainting spell, I slept like the dead for a day. When I finally awoke, I could feel a ton of bricks laid upon my head. I looked at the mirror Lily had brought me and shuddered. My paper white skin made dark circles around me, my eyes look even worse. Even a dead person would look better than I do. What kind of expression is that, Miss Aura? You look funny! I glowed at the petite girl beside me. Her pink ponytail swayed as she bobbed her head. Her pretty blue eyes sparkled with laughter, which darkened my expression. When I woke up, Lily was the one beside me. She lift she filled me in on the important details. Everyone saw the same white light when the they all transformed back to their human forms. No one knew what caused the light or the transformation. Probably the locket, right? So <laughs> I think it's the fact that like Aura saw the sister like gold and then it's related to her, so maybe the mother had something to do with it. But they decided it had to be related to it since the light happened after I fainted, and so they soon transformed. The curse was not broken, but it was disturbed. Everyone was convinced my coming here was simply not a coincidence. Leo was about to leave the room when someone suddenly opened the door. You're not supposed to enter the ladies' room without permission, Lord Dion! What if you saw Miss Aura unclothed? Oh my god, there's Dion! <laughs> if I'm, I'm not gonna lie, like, I kinda like Dion's personality. It's just- it's just- I don't know if he's, like, more sincere. Th that, that's his problem. A guy with platinum blonde hair was leaning against the doorframe. He resembled Sol so very much, except for the lighter hair and amber eyes. Can I come in? There you go, I just asked permission. Lord Dion! And to see Aura naked, now that would be a rare and lovely sight. Oh my god! <laughs> Lord Dion's lips turned into a sly grin when he finally saw me in my bed. I didn't know whether he was joking or being serious, but knowing Dion is definitely the latter. I gave him a stern glare, but he didn't stop. But that didn't stop the blushing burning on my cheeks. That is not something a gentleman would say. Lily sighed with exasperation at Dion's unrelenting grin. It looked like she wanted to say more, but given Dion's stubbornness, she probably thought there was little she could do. I had better go and help Miss Maria now. Please do not cause Miss Aura any more trouble. Dion raised both his hands in surrender, but his grin didn't change. Easy now, I won't do anything. Good. Lily gave him one last glare before leaving the, into the hall. Dion shrugged and wandered into my room. That was a rather interesting conversation. There are consequences to seeing me naked, though. You'll no doubt suffer permanent blindness. He chuckled. I don't mind being blinded forever, knowing that the last thing I see was something so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> the last thing I've seen is something so beautiful. A deep blush covered my face and I glared at him. Pervert? Dion chuckled again. I'm glad you're alright. My brother has been so worried about you, you know? Really? Yeah, I'm sure he'll be here in three, two. Dion counted in the sound of soft but rapid footsteps came hurrying down the hall. So stumbled in and stood beside Dion, bending down to try to catch his breath. And one. My lady! Soul huffed between wards, pressing his hands into his chest as he regained his breath. You are finally awake. I gave Soul a worried look. Are you alright, Soul? I should be the one asking you that, my lady. Came as soon as I found out you were awake. Dion leaned in with one arm against the wall and whistled a low sound. You seem more worried than usual, Soul. How suspicious. Soul blushed at the smirk. Dion wore with pride. Stop that, brother. As usual, it's really fun watching my little brother get flustered. Little brother. It took me a moment to remember that Dion was the oldest son. It didn't help that Dion was a few inches shorter and Sol had behaved with greater air of maturity. I don't think the height really- okay, anyway. But <laughs> when they stood together, it was easy to forget who was the eldest. Oh, this is- this is probably royal, right? So nosy, can't you keep 
Can't you hear her voices down, Dion? It's so early in the morning. Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god! Yo, Royal is so good looking. He kind of looks like, uh, fucking Waltz, right? Like, from Cinderella Phenomenon. Jesus. A third male came in from the hall. As he walked in, his dark skin and piercing silver eyes were revealed, which seemed even more dangerous when combined with an annoyed look on his face. And this must be Royal. What's your problem, old man? It's not like anyone can hear me anyway. There are plenty of animals who would disagree. Dion smirked at Royal and swung his hand in a dismissive wave. And since when did you become so friendly with animals? Since realizing they're higher beings than you and deserve the respect. Royal certainly didn't fit the butler role when he spoke to Dion, a deluxe son, in such a manner. I guess seven years as a teddy bear changed their relationship. Or maybe they were always so close enough to argue this way? So, you're like the king of the forest now, Papa Bear. I flinched at the nickname, having forgot about it after sleeping my after my sleeping spell. Royal shot me a glare and I immediately faced the floor. Royal sighed. How mature, Dion. Why, thank you. I shifted uncomfortably in my bed, I lifting my head a little. I wasn't bothered too much about it. But they were arguing in my room, which seemed inappropriate, even if I was the one- even if I was the only guest in the house. I think Sol realized my discomfort because he stepped between Sol and Dion. He looked displeased, though it didn't diminish the gentleness of his features. Gentlemen, Aura is a lady and our guest. Please show some restraint and respect. I saw Royal wince, but he didn't show any remorse. Tch, I have no time for idiots like him. Chastin, Royal shot Dion a glare and left. I thought he looked a little sulky after being told off, but he might be my imagination. Or else still a grumpy old bear. The knowledge was a little relieving. I was getting used to the growing personalities and I would have missed the grumpy royal. There you are! That voice! Oh, this is Maria, probably, right? Following that sudden voice, a lady with long dark hair, st startling red eyes, came from the hall. There was a demonic aura around her, and all weakened by the deadly glare, she aimed at Dion's head. Uh, Miss Maria, fancy meeting you here. I gaped at the doorway. This is Miss Maria? I always imagined her to be a school teacher or something similar to my previous landlady. Not too old, but showing plenty of age as someone tasked to take care of the deluxe children. Miss Maria, however, looked to be only in her mid to late twenties. It's slacking off from work again, eh, Dion? I was just... Miss Maria didn't give Dion a chance to finish, taking a hold of his ear and then proceeding to drag him towards the door. Couldn't help but wincing. Ow, 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 okay, careful with the ears! Stopping before she left the room, Miss Maria looked over at me, as if discovering I was there. Her arm lowered a little bit, pulling Dion down with it. His teary eyes made my heart thump in sympathy, even if he did it to himself by avoiding his chores. Oh, you're finally awake. Y yeah? Do you have an idea how this happened? I slowly shook my head. Her terse manner of speaking hasn't changed, leaving me nervous but a little relieved. I felt I should apologize, but she sighed and continued speaking before I could. Thought so. The answers will not come by the right time. I trust they shall as well. Sol offered me a gentle smile and excusing himself before excusing himself from the room. Um, Miss Maria, can you let me go now? Miss Maria turned her stern eyes from me to and resumed glaring at Dion. No, you're coming with me. I resuming his retreat, Miss Maria dragged Dion from the room by the ear. I heard him whimper and begging for mercy all the way down in the hall. I squeezed my locket, confused and anxious over what just occurred in my room. It scared me a little that things seemed normal when everyone was fl a plush toy. Hopefully I'll figure out the answers soon. A few days have passed since then. I walked in the garden just to, just as the sun came up from behind the clouds and showered the mansion with warmth. It was a welcome change to the gray skies I had seen since waking up. My hopes for answers were still unfulfilled. I still didn't know why Gold was the only one who remained as a doll. I was still caught up in the curse I never expected, so I needed some fresh air and sunshine. As I walked alone, I noticed Lily hiding behind one of those trees. She was peeking around the trunk and occasionally ducking behind it again as if she was secretly watching something, probably the prince, or rather someone. I already have an idea who that someone is. I, should I approach her or should I ignore her? I kinda, if I'm being honest, I kinda wanna do Dion's route first, but I don't know what will lead to his, so maybe I should like, ignore her for now? I don't freaking know. However, Lily's affairs were none of my business and I had my own thoughts that needed my attention. Turning my head away, I continued on my walk. 
can't understand why everyone else changed back but Gold didn't. Not that I know why everyone changed back when they did either, but... I've been stuck in this loop since that day. Even the fresh air wasn't helping clear my head. Discouraged, I decided to switch my topics and wonder what I should make for dinner. Oh, I wonder if Lily knows what Sol's favorite meal is. After all, Sol offered to make me a dress, and I hadn't thought of a good way to thank him for it. A meal wasn't much, but it was but it was a nice start. With that task in mind, I crept back over to where Lily was hiding, not wishing to scare her or ruin her steak out. Psst, Lily, I need to ask you some- Shh, he'll hear you! Giving me a warning looking over her shoulder, Lily hid herself behind the tree and continued watching the garden. Curious, I decided to join her. Woo, he's pretty! <laughs> Look at him, oh my god. Surrounded by a beautiful field of roses was the prince of the castle. His gentleman's smile wavering, Sol was Sol was picking out roses and seemed to lay them on the ground after teasing a petal with, with the tops of his fingers. Ah, I'm so jealous of those roses! If you like him so much, why don't you just go over and tell him? I told you it's impossible! He's the heir of the deluxe while I'm just a mere maid! Don't have a chance! I admit, I was not knowledgeable about the costumes of the upper class, but I didn't understand why they couldn't be a couple. Lily sulked at me. Can you not understand? Prince Sol is out of my league. Love knows no boundaries. How encouraging. Her sarcastic tone is so unlily like I didn't understand her hesitation, but I did understand why she liked him so much. Just thinking about it brought another smile to my lips. Lily gasped. You! Huh? I knew it! You also like him! Where did that idea come from? I can't blame you for liking him as well. He's a prince out he's Prince Sol after all. I shook my head at her. It was true that Sol was handsome, and he made me blush a little, but I didn't think I liked him as much as Lily claimed. Um, I don't! Lily patted me on the shoulder, clearly ignoring my words in confusion. But, you are my friend, Miss Aura. If so, if Prince Sol chooses you, there will be no hard feelings. I feel like there would be! <laughs> I promise you that! Uh, I gave that Lily's bizarre train of thought. Sol came up behind us. He was carrying a small bouquet of roses in his arms. Lady Lily? Lady Aura? What are you two doing, hiding out here? We both turned around, flushing deep red and being caught. And Prince Sol! We were just... Just discussing how to best handle our chores. Miss Maria wasn't in a good mood earlier. My shaky voice betrayed my confidence in the lie, but it was certainly a believable one. Sol tilted his head to one side. Really? Yes, that's right! To find and conquer, ha ha ha! I see. I hope she isn't giving you too much trouble on such a nice day. And he actually believed it. As if I remembered something, Sol dropped the subject and lifted a rose from his stack. For you, Lady Lily. Uh, for me? Her face went scarlet. Yes, they are beautiful, are they not? It was cute seeing Lily so flustered, though I was a little worried for her as well. She kept saying it was impossible to pursue her love for Sol, so maybe this kind of thing hurts her too? Oh my, you don't look well, Lady Lily. Are you sick? He leaned forward and laid his hand upon her shoulder. Or forehead, sorry. Ugh! This is not good for my heart! Oh no! <laughs> Lily ran back to the mansion, looking like she might cry. I don't think he meant anything by that, but it seems almost too cruel if he didn't know her feelings. Did I do something wrong? I guess that's his flaw. So, Sol is, uh, Sol is dense if he cannot see Lily's feelings for him. I shrugged, not wishing to say anything Lily didn't want me to say. Sol sighed. I hope she's fine. By the way, here, for you, my lady. Thank you. I smiled, accepting the rose he held out to me. So, why the rose of soul? I'm going to put them inside Gold's room. Roses have always been her favorite. Seeing that wistful smile on Soul's face told me how much she missed his little sister. I squeezed the locket for comfort. I really need to find out how to break the curse soon. Okay guys, I'm gonna end the episode right here, so at least now they're not bears and not toys, so it's not gonna be like weird, and now they're all human. And still don't know what route I'm going into, but we'll we'll find out because we're still in the beginning. And I, I truly believe the reason why everyone turned back is because of the locket, and it's connected to Aura's mother, because Aura's mother used to work as a cook in their family, so she has to do with something with a curse. We'll, we'll see how this turns out. It's getting a little more interesting now, so I'm glad that they're not bears and we're not dating bears, because that was weird. 
Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to join the companions. And if you would like to help support the channel on Patreon, the link is in the description. You get early access to videos, videos for Patreon only, the Discord server to come talk to me, and a bunch of other stuff as well. Or you can support the channel for free with gawkbox.com slash a girl and a game. All you have to do is make an account, open it up on mobile, tablet, or your computer, download the games or do the offers, and you donate real money to the channel, which will help me continue making videos like this and continue the channel overall. So please let me know in the comments what you guys thought now that they're human and not bears. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! What? <laughs> Why is kiss an option? Excuse me. You can't just fucking put that as an option. We don't even f He found his tongue wandering inside her mouth, exploring slowly as she- <laughs> I'm sorry, let me do that again. He found his tongue wandering in her mouth,